Some time ago, I made this video explaining what components to look for when buying a laptop for architecture. And although it helped many of you guys out, I still received many comments asking me for which laptop they should buy. After answering many of your comments, I decided to make a list of the top laptops that are out there. And today, I'll be showing you which laptop you should buy. Before we get into the laptops themselves, I've created three categories of which you may fit into. Category A is for those who just started architecture, or maybe are in their first or second semesters. These are the people who will be learning about architecture, but won't necessarily be creating plans on a computer just yet. It's also for those who are learning to use programs like AutoCAD, SketchUp, and maybe even Rhino to create basic plans and diagrams. Category B is for anyone who is using those programs that I mentioned, but at a more advanced level. You may also be using Photoshop or some other Adobe products, and perhaps you also started learning about Revit and basic rendering. Finally, Category C includes students who are close to graduation, or at least creating complex designs with a lot of detail and creating very complex rendering scenes. Now that you understand how this video is organized, let's move on to the top 4 laptops for each category. The Acer Aspire 5 is one of the most inexpensive laptops in the list. The nice thing about it is that it comes with 8GB of RAM. Paired with its i3 processor, it's enough to run programs like AutoCAD and SketchUp. Enough to run programs like Auto 1TB of storage makes it a great purchase. For about $50 more dollars, you can get this HP laptop. It's going to have similar specs to the Acer, but you're going to get a touchscreen, and it's also the lightest laptop in this category. The trade-off here though is that the resolution isn't as nice as the Acer. I would only consider this a good purchase if you're used to touchscreen laptops. If not, stick to one of the other choices. Next up, we have the Dell Inspiron 3000. Unfortunately, this only comes with 4GB of RAM, which will lack power when running your programs. The reason I included it was because it contains a solid state drive which will make accessing your files a faster process. Plus, RAM is upgradable and not usually too expensive to upgrade. Finally, the Lenovo IdeaPad shares similar specs to the other laptops. What really makes it stand out is that it's the thinnest in the category, which is perfect for those of you who will be designing on the move. Category B is where we really start to see a difference in laptops, and a great example is the Asus VivoBook. It weighs less than 4 pounds, has a high definition screen, 1 terabyte of storage, and an i5 processor. Its only real drawback is that it lacks RAM. But as I've said before, this isn't a big problem. The Dell 15 is a bit more expensive, but you're going to get more RAM. Even though it's only 4 gigs more, it's going to make a big difference. It's not as thin as the VivoBook, but it's thin nonetheless. The MSI is the first gaming laptop in this video. I usually hear people refer to gaming laptops as bulky or just plain ugly, but there's a reason they're used for gaming, and that's because they have dedicated graphics cards, something you need when designing on a computer. This laptop is pricey, but the graphics card, 16 gigs of RAM, and overall specs are well worth it. Remember though, MSI computers are usually going to be more expensive than their competition. The HP Pavilion is a good introduction into gaming computers. It's not as bulky as the other gaming computers, and also not as expensive either. This is a good option if you're going to be creating simple renders on a budget. The Asus is the first laptop on our Category C list. For starters, if you purchase the one that I've linked in my description, you're apparently going to get a couple of games included on the list. This laptop contains a solid state drive, but unfortunately will allow you only to store about 200 gigs of information. That won't be enough, so if you do choose this option, make sure you have an external hard drive or a subscription to some cloud service. For those of you who want the power of a gaming computer without having to deal with the edgy design, consider buying the Asus VivoBook Pro. It comes with 16 gigs of RAM, enough storage space, and a GTX 1050 graphics card, all for about $1,100. The HP Omen is a biased selection. It is the computer I currently own. I can tell you firsthand that it is the right balance of price and power. It's been able to handle anything I've thrown at it, from AutoCAD to Revit, from Rhino to Lumion. The biggest con this laptop has is that it only has 128 gigs of solid state drive. Fortunately, it comes with a terabyte of extra storage. Last but not least, we have the Acer Predator. For about 50 more dollars, you'll get more power and more solid state storage than the HP Omen. On the other hand, it's not as nice though, but that's an important personal and subjective opinion. Before I go, I wanted to leave you guys with a few disclaimers. I have not used every laptop in this list. Choices were done based on price and technical specification research. I'm not tied to any specific brand. I've owned pretty much every laptop brand out there ranging from low-end to high-end models and have noticed that choosing a laptop based on branding can lead to a poor decision in most cases. 
I did, though, take into account reviews based on other buyers' experiences. Prices and links change. The information I have included is for your convenience, but keep in mind that sometimes the price of the laptops may be cheaper or more expensive depending where you live and when you're purchasing them. These prices should only be used as a baseline for your research to give you a better idea if you're under or overpaying. Certain laptops I have shown have other models that may be cheaper or more expensive. I suggest you look into those in case they are better fit for your needs. I know that buying a new laptop can become very stressful at times, but it shouldn't be. It should be a fun experience. That's why if you do get stuck and have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my best to help you. Also, if you've used any laptops that aren't on my list, feel free to leave a comment with the model and your overall thoughts on it so that others can look into them as well. Thank you guys for watching, take care, and I'll talk to you soon.